when selecting a project to work on, what are the most important things you look out for? <laughs> Zip and say the money. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Inuzanam and this is Level Up by Leadway. So today, we're going to delve into a very interesting industry, film and cinematography. And we have an amazing guest here, Oluwa the Best. I think you don't need any introduction. Oluwa I, the Best. I think I do. You do? <laughs> <laughs> and we have King J. Joel Evans, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, boss. All right, so let's delve into this. I love this particular film because as some of you may know, some, not all, some, like very, very tiny, a very tiny lot of you may know I'm in this industry as well. So Oluwa the Best, tell us how you came by this Rather quirky and unique and interesting <laughs> name. Uh, I, I think about the name, it was nothing serious. I think it was, it was an advent of when Facebook was suggesting username. I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. So Facebook suggested that name for you? It suggested that best, then I added the lure. So my son name is Dada. So Facebook suggested that best and I picked it. Well. So there's no mystery behind it. So Facebook is part of <laughs> your branding. It's copyright. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. So how did you get into film directing? Like, how did it all begin? Um, so like I usually say, it's, my, it's like a creative journey. Mm -hmm. So filmmaking is just like a bus stop <laughs> that I am presently okay. and continue. So I started the creative journey like as a graphic designer. I did photography while I was in school. 100 level, 200 level, I got bored and I started shooting videos. So it was just that trajectory. There was no like, I didn't, like, there was no like imagination of who oh, I want to become this big director while I was young or anything. It was never like that. It was just, I was just expressing my creativity. Um, photography became a thing in Nigeria at that point. Many people were trying to learn how to use the camera and all that. So I learned, I had a friend that had the camera. So it was easy to access. I was just shooting. I got into school. I was figuring out to make extra cash. I bought the camera and I started shooting every weekend. Um, being in like Monday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm somewhere at times out of Lagos, just shooting just to get money to live by another week. Then I got bored of that because I mean I was good at it. I was making good enough money, and it wasn't like filmmaking was profitable as at that time. The profitable part of filmmaking. Um, we're like movie industry and all that, but like weddings, how much are they paying or anything like that? But like, I figured it was interesting, and because I'd seen a lot of things on screen, and I was kind of wondering how these That's things come crazy. to be. Yeah, so I stumbled on somebody that was doing great at filmmaking, then I decided to learn from the person, and I started, I left photography and I was in film. Oh, it wasn't a wise decision at, 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 at that time because it wasn't like profitable compared to photography. But I mean, hey, you, you can look at it as like an investment because yeah. you're profiting from it. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is yeah. Like, photography now is taking the dip. <laughs> so, Jay, so I know you as an assistant director, some of the jobs you've done, an yes, actor, yes, also like a cinematographer. So, how did you get into all of that? Uh, for me, it started way back in 2012, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> way back in 2012, I joined a film school here in Lagos. And um, I, start, I started acting, at, every one of us is familiar with Superstory, This Life, yeah. you know, the WAP production back then. And uh, I got bored, like you said. It wasn't profiting, it wasn't paying, you know. And uh, I felt like going behind the camera might fetch me, you know, some more cheese, yeah. right? So by the time I dove, dive into that, I realized that, okay, there is more into this. And that even helped me to broaden my creative, you know, space. And yeah, the rest is history. So have you had any other job or profession besides filmmaking? <laughs> I used to be a dancer. <laughs> I used to be a dancer and then uh, stand up comedy, you know, right? Really? Yeah. <laughs> my, my very first MC job was, give, was by Schlumberg. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Schlumberg. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. The oil company, yeah. One of the executive staff was wedding. I had a wedding then and I was invited to be the MC. 
Yeah. And That's how'd that go? Well, well, I made my first 25,000 Naira there. <laughs> <laughs> you get spares at that time, come on. <laughs> Real. <laughs> wow. Guys, for aspiring filmmakers to stand a chance to attend the Filmmaking Masterclass Shoot, Edit, Repeat by a lot of best, scan the QR code on the screen. Curtsy, lead way. Yeah. Have, you, have you had any other job or profession other than this? Because from, from the story you've just said, you know, you started from school yeah. and it's just been that trajectory. No, 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 I've not. Oh. It's been creative since, since I knew myself. No, so cool. Crazy, right? So, in in from your level of understanding or from your perspective, actually, what is film directing? Mm. So, film directing is. So, I need to break it down because what I do when you say film directing, a lot of people just categorize into like movies. I don't direct movies. I direct commercials mm -hmm. and documentaries. So it's, it's, it's similar, yeah. like the skill and um, how you approach it is similar, but like the output is different. Completely. <laughs> because Completely. In, in commercial, you're trying to tell a one half film in one, in minute. one minute and it has to make sense. Right. Um, but it doesn't mean that it's sim simpler or is other than the one hour directing. It's just different. It's just different. You have to learn that skill to tell a quick story and sell the market. In movies, you're not necessarily selling markets, you're just passing emotions, you're passing like feelings to the audience. So directing is transferring, um, so in, in film it will be transferring that vis vision you have in your head into pictures, into emotions for the audience to understand what you're the story you're trying to tell. In commercial, it is you're selling a product yeah. Um, and it's still the same thing. You're still trans transferring that vision. You're and the, the brand as a story, they give it to you as a director to bring that story to life. So how you decide to bring it to life is what makes you a director. Like That's what directing is. Vision, basically, yes, yeah. and how you can put it down. Yeah. Yes, actually. So you've directed some very interesting works in the industry. Which has been your favorite and why? That's that's very hard to say because that's like saying which is your favorite child. Um. <laughs> well, you stand. I mean, you do. It's different because uh, you, your children have emotions. You can hurt one, but it's, you cannot hurt your work. You can't know. So you just say which one is your favorite and why. So I have two favorites, mm -hmm. um, and probably because of the situation that brought about this project, not necessarily like the execution. Or ne well, the execution was great. The result was awesome. Mm -hmm. But two major ones that come to my mind is the Octa FX project. Why? Because as at that point, it was just all of us getting out of COVID. Okay. And we're like figuring out what are we going to do with our life now. Weddings became smaller. Yes. Um, and those were like things that were bringing money on a regular basis. And during COVID, I was just indoor exploring stuff with my friends and trying to learn this cinematography thing properly because when you are shooting events, it's like just run and gone. But when you now want to intentionally start creating stuff, you need to learn a lot of things. So it was during that COVID period I figured I wanted to be a director because I could do every other thing that I had to do with filmmaking. Um, so we came out of COVID and I got an opportunity to direct that project. So it was... And it came out great. And it, it became like a landmark project for me. Almost every project that I've had to direct after that, they've had to refer to that project. If they don't refer to it during the briefing, they refer to it during like maybe post-production and all that. And also not just only me, even generally in the like mm -hmm. commercial space, in any commercial director, you if you ask them in Nigeria, they probably sense them that project as a reference. Then the second would be the Arasta pocket commercial. Because I, that one, I like, I literally planned the scene myself. It was not. Yeah, it was, I was very right. intentional about planning each scene of that particular commercial. So they put it on Big Brother, right? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Guys, for aspiring filmmakers to stand a chance to attend the filmmaking masterclass, shoot, edit, repeat by a lot of best, scan the QR code on the screen. Curtsy, lead way. So Jay, um, you've. Been a part of um, a few commercials, a few commercial projects. Which one has been your favorite and why? Uh, favorite? Do I really have one? 
Well, I would say the project with FCCPC was one of my favorite because uh, the story was kind of tedious to execute, right? And um, we had to deal with directing kids. And you know what it is when you have to direct kids, you know? And uh, there was this very child that was all over the place. So I literally had to babysit one of the characters, the, the, the lead character, one of the boys. And it was a whole lot. I felt like a dad, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And being an assistant director on a commercial project, I think Ulua Davis might understand a little bit because anything goes wrong, it is you, yeah. right? And uh, you basically control the set. Yeah, trust yeah. me. So yeah, it was quite an experience, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick that as one of my favorites. Right? Yeah. Kids, yeah. man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when selecting a project to work on, what are the most important things you look out for? First, the director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody laughing like this. Is <laughs> no, because I understand. <laughs> director, yeah, sometimes it can be difficult because, uh, pardon me, director needs to be a listener, especially when we're on set, right? At that point, when you're on set, director does not, he shouldn't be disturbed. That's the word, right? Because he's in his, he's in his creative space, right? That does not need any third party, right? But at the same time, is the director remains my first neighbor, right? To either solving solu solving problems or creating solutions. Sometimes directors blank off, and I can tell you that for free. So if if I get to work with a director that is stoic, that it's, I just want to do my thing, it's sometimes hard because there's no flexibility to, you know bringing your own creativity into the space, right? So first thing I look out for is who am I working with, right? And uh, I would say secondly is, uh, the actors. Okay. Yeah. So these two are my main priorities whenever I'm going on the project. Who are the characters who have to deal with and who is heading this project? Yeah. Okay. Will you want the best? Me? <laughs> is if I say the money? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was just joking. Uh, when selecting a project, to be honest, so I have like a unique style. People say I have like a unique style. So it's probably because I've probably picked some kind of project that are similar, mm -hmm. that is unique to the way I tell stories. Um, so when I see those stories and they resonate with me, so I don't pick stories that are foreign to me, like things I've not experienced or I've not had, like even a third party experience, maybe read about or hear about it. For example, directing kids, there was a commercial, <laughs> this is most likely to see this, but there was a commercial that was like almost 100% with different children and it didn't come true. And I was almost excited. I thank God it didn't come true because I could like, foresee the stress yes. ahead of time. And I, the last thing I want to do is get a project and fumble the project. Exactly. I'd rather not do this project. So most times it's the story. Does it like resonate with what I'm trying to create or what I'm currently creating? Um, if that is good, the money too, please. It's very important. Mm. <laughs> really very important. Because <laughs> there's, no, there's no retirement plan. <laughs> Actually, you're yeah, right. You're an entrepreneur and you have to just you have to have your own retirement plan if not you know mm -hmm. guys for aspiring filmmakers to stand a chance to attend the filmmaking masterclass shoot edit repeat by a lot of best scan the qr code on the screen curtsy lead way so we hear that directors like to work with uh, certain people or like a certain team um on every project why is that um so i think it's about um people that understand how you work and uh, that are able to deliver without you having to explain everything. Yeah. So like if I've worked with you before and you know that, oh, this is how I usually like to light my scene, or this is how I usually like to approach the story, mm -hmm. and we've done one or two projects, it's almost like, it's almost like an artist signing a new manager. Like you've been together with this guy for yeah. like, he understands your branding, understands everything about you, then 
all of a sudden you now bring another person. True. It's like you're not having to explain. So it slows down the entire process. So that's, that's right. basically why. And also, the people are, if someone is good, why are you like changing him? Well, true. Maybe for a, for a different perspective, you know? If someone is good, yeah, but for a different perspective, I've often come to find out that like, if you work with like a certain team, like for instance, I have, I, I, I employ cinematographers, right? Yeah. Because they can help bring my vision to life. So if I, it, sometimes if I change, then it gives my work a fresh vibe. Yeah, it's tedious trying to work with somebody new, especially if that person doesn't understand your style. But you might be lucky and you get somewhere that you guys just jive and it's yeah. seamless. So I mean, there are two different, there are two different kind of people in, in your life as a creative. People you are currently working with and the people you look forward to work with. Yes. Maybe when you get the kind of project to afford them yeah, or even just maybe when they are free mm -hmm. because at times it's not about the money it's about even them they are not available yeah so i mean obviously there are people i look forward to working with but i'm not working with them presently so it's not like you're going to be stuck with this particular team for life even at times your team will not be available because there are some projects i direct and the agency or probably the production company that reach, reach out to me will tell me they only need me on this project as a director mm -hmm. i can't enforce them to Bring all my your, team your on team, board yeah. because I mean their budgets. The people that I work oh, with are really expensive. expensive. My bow. <laughs> <laughs> I also need to figure out: the, do I want to make make a living, or I just want to be creative? Yeah. Because you can be creative and just talk to your gun, and you are broke. True. So in in cases like that, I'm open to like working with new people. I just know that I have to do double of the work that I plan to do before because now I have to now start the process again. And I've worked with quite a number of DPs and even other team members from time to time. All right, cool. So right now we're going to do quick, quick fire questions, like rapid questions. I'm going to ask you one at a time, like, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's start with you, Jay. All right. Tea or coffee? Tea. City girl or country girl? <laughs> City girl, I think. Stay at home or go out? For the most part, stay at home. Cook or clean up? Both. Both. Yeah. Netflix and chill or cinema? Netflix and chill. Before? <laughs> before, G you know, before. You know? Rainy season or dry season? Because of directing, dry season, please. Ah, uh, yes. D dry season. <laughs> Night owl or early bird? Night. Board game or video game? Video game. Text or call? Text. Hmm. <laughs> Invisibility or the ability to fly? Mm. The ability to fly. Ah, of course. Breakfast or dinner? Dinner, of course. Really? really? <laughs> you know what, chocolate breakfast. <laughs> you no, know, please. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Wow, in interesting. Interesting stuff. Okay, let's get back to it, yeah? All right. What do you think the misconceptions around the rules of I mean there are misconceptions around rules around DOPs and 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 the rules of a director, right? Can you tell us what the difference is between a director and a director of photography? The difference is very clear. Mm -hmm. you my blink case you make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm please still <laughs> chiming. All right. Director of photography is basically the man behind the camera. Yeah. Right. Director calls the shots. That's actually, in a nutshell, right? Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. Let me make it deeper. Okay. Right up. <laughs> I want to make it deeper in context. So if a project goes bad, the person to blame is the director. 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 Yes. If a project goes well, who do we blame? The director. Directors. Most times it's the entire team. Uh, yeah. So literally, the director is like the president of that project. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the try the, the DOP is the like an H it's like a governor mm -hmm. of a of a state where the director controls the entire country. Guys, for aspiring filmmakers to stand a chance to attend the filmmaking masterclass Shoot, Edit, Repeat by a lot of best, scan the QR code on the screen. Curtsy, lead way. And the DOP is responsible for getting all the premium shots, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, all right, cool. So there are a lot of people out there who, especially with the tide of social media and, and how and filmmaking, there are a lot of people out there who, especially in Nigeria, who want to get into this business. They, they see how lucrative it is. They see young guys and, and, and girls 
doing amazing things yeah. on, on, on camera, on screen. And you want to get into this whole thing, but a lot of them don't know how to start. And the, the, the entire, when you see somebody that's doing well, or when you see certain big projects like, like Hollywood, Nollywood projects, you know, the Tribe of Judas, the Dune 2s, you see it and, and the, 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 the young guy who's in his teens or early 20s, who's just starting life, sees these things as out of reach. Like how is it even possible for me to even get to this level where I'm able to create these things? Forgetting that the people that are creating them are also human yeah, beings, yeah. Yeah. right? Who have also started out with a dream and have gotten to that point. So what advice, like what, what can you tell them as, as people who are, you know, doing things in the industry, notable things in the industry, what updates can you give them to help them on this journey? Please, can I quote on that real quick? Sorry. Yeah, no. Sure, go right ahead. He made it very clear from the start of this, right? Mm -hmm. He started somewhere, got found interest in camera, right? Photography, and he started really small. I would say maybe back then we didn't really have that YouTube Insights yeah. platform. Yeah. But right now there's a, you know, you can learn a lot. There's a lot of free university out there, you know, if you find interest in this particular um, journey, hop on YouTube or something, you know. Yeah, teach yourself gradually, start small, right? And the journey is going to align till you get to the spot. So I was just going to build on that. Mm -hmm. And because we can be in a space whereby you're just soaking knowledge, soaking knowledge, soaking knowledge. <laughs> and not doing anything with it. True. So the True. only way to do great work is to actually do something. To practice. You have to, to do, do that. Yes. That do is very important. Mm. Don't wait for the great work. Mm -hmm. Your first work will most likely not be the great work that you are going to do Actually. so for you to get to that great work you have to keep doing you do you make mistake you correct it in the next one you make mistake you correct it in the next one and that's how you find yourself in places where you're doing great stuff great all right so guys you've heard it it's the same message every time you have to learn you have to be consistent you cannot take away the power of consistency when you're trying to do great things if you're consistent at some point you will look back and be like oh look at how far i've come yeah. That's always the joy. Until next time, this is Level Up, and my name is Eluzanam. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>